so as you may know, my name is Carly. I study in Italy for university and I'm from America. Basically on this channel, I talk a lot about the differences between the two. And now today I'm talking about my favorite Italian words and I chose them for many different reasons. I chose ones that sound pretty, ones that have funny meanings, ones that are very practical that I wish we had in the English, and some other fun words. So let's begin. My first favorite word is bimbo minchia. Bimbo minchia is a word it's kind of rude, and Italians use it to describe people who abbreviate text messages. So, okay, as you may know, uh, in the US, people always shorten words. So, for example, see you later, instead of writing out the whole word, see you later, people would say the letter C, the letter U, and then the letter L with the number 8, and then the letter R because it's shorter and people used to have phones that were not touchscreen so it would be easier to type out the little digits individually and they would spell words in a shorter way but these days we have smartphones and smartphones make it so much easier to write longer words in a quicker amount of time in fact if you abbreviate with text messages like this then it kind of takes a long time and actually the spell check might even change it to a word that you didn't want to write. So that's why people usually write out the whole word this time, but sometimes people still use abbreviations if they're emailing a friend that's very close or if they're using something that doesn't have spell check. But anyways, in Italian, if you use shortcuts like this, people judge you so hard. And I know because I've tried this with so many of my friends and all of them are like, oh, Carly, stop it. That's so weird. No one does that. That was so middle school. <laughs> And I honestly think it's hilarious because in America, if you use abbreviations, like, it's not, like, bad. It's just kind of funny, and people don't really use it very often, but it's, like, peculiar. But in Italian, if you use it, people really just disrespect you, and they call you a bimbo minchia. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite words, because I think it's just so funny. Next up, punto virgola, which means semicolon. So punto virgola literally translated means point comma and it's because a semicolon is just a dot and then a comma and instead of using a word for semicolon they just say punto virgola and it's just so practical and i think it's really funny the next word hamburger it means hamburger so i think this word is super funny because i mean i'm american and we eat hamburgers a lot there and i think this word is super funny because yes i'm american but that's not why i think it's just funny because Italians always judge Americans because we pronounce all the Italian foods the wrong way and like I totally agree We do pronounce everything wrong spaghetti gelato pizza like yeah, we just pronounce it the American way But like there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way we pronounce it But come on you cannot judge us when you pronounce hamburger as hamburger. That's as Italian as it gets So that's why I like the word hamburger. <laughs> it gives me an excuse to kind of uh, not be so sad when I pronounce gelato like that. Then there's the word fra, and I personally love the word fra because it means bro, but it doesn't just mean bro. The reason it means bro is because, you know how in English, bro is short for brother, and it's like a thing that you call your friends, like, yo, bro, let's go hang out today. Well, in Italian, they also use the word bro, literally bro, like from English, they just use that word as well, but sometimes they also use fra, which is short for fratello, which is the Italian word for brother. So they literally just took the first syllable fratello, just like we took the first syllable of brother and used it as a slang word. So I think it's very funny. And also, an added value to this word is that if someone is named Francesco or Francesca, that person can be called Fra as a nickname. So additionally, not only is a person named Fra as a nickname, but they're also named Bro as a nickname. So, pretty cool. <laughs> Next, I love the word appuntamento because it means appointment. But that probably sounds boring at first, but trust me, it's actually really awesome because in Italian, when you say appuntamento, it just means that you plan time to hang out with someone, whether it be for a formal purpose or for an informal purpose. So if you have a date with someone, it's an appuntamento, an appointment. If you have a doctor's appointment and you have to go to the doctor to have a checkup, it's called an appuntamento. If you want to hang out with some friends and you plan something, it's an appuntamento. If you have a business meeting, appuntamento. You name it. Anything that requires your time is an appuntamento. And I love this word because it's so vague. And if you have to kind of quickly tell someone you're not available because you have something else to do, you can just say, sorry, I can't come. I have an appointment. And that is just so convenient. It really saves time. Because I feel like when you're trying to tell someone you can't hang out with them or you can't do what the person wants you to do, you have to usually explain why. And it kind of takes a long time. 
So if you're in a rush, you can just say like, oh, sorry, I have an appointment. It's just so convenient and it sounds very professional. It's not just like, sorry, I can't. Like that's just kind of a rejection. People will just wonder why you can't. They think that you're just blowing them off because you don't want to see them. But if you do want to see them, but you can't, you can just say I have an appointment and they'll understand. They'll feel not so rejected. So it's perfect. <laughs> don't feel rejected, just feel respected. I love the word farfalla and I also love the word stracciatella. So the first one means butterfly, the second one means a type of ice cream with vanilla and chocolate. And I love both of them because they sound so beautiful, just like the word bella, which literally means beautiful. So I just love those words. <laughs> also, another beautiful word is espresso, which means, yes, it means the type of coffee that you just take a shot of, like a shot of espresso. But it also means express, and I think it's so cute how espresso, the coffee, is the same as expressed. Another word I love is carina or carino. And it means very darling. So if you want to say, like, darling to someone, you can say cara. And cara is short for carino. But you also have the option of using the entire word. And either way, it means, like, you can say it to someone. Like, ciao cara or ciao carino. Or you can also say something is cute, is darling. So you could say, oh, that boy is so cute. He's very carino. Che carino col ragazzo. It's just kind of a nice thing to say about someone. It's like if they're cute, not in a physical sense, but more of like a personality, overall quality sense. So if someone's a charming person, you would just say cari, you know? Uh, I just think it's a very nice word to describe someone. I don't think we really have one in English. Like I think the closest word honestly would be charming, but I feel like charming is more like, it has multiple meanings. It could also mean kind of deceptive. Like if someone's trying to be too charming, to kind of get what they want, but I don't know. I think carino is just a special word that we don't have and I really wish we had it. It's so cute and it sounds nice too. The famous word that every single foreigner knows in Italian when they come here to study is allora. And allora is just a great word because it means like, first of all, it sounds really pretty and second of all, it's so helpful because when you want to keep the conversation going, you say allora, like, Okay, now, so it has many translations to English and it depends on which situation you want to use the word in, but oftentimes it means like so or now or okay, like moving on. It's like a transition word. So if you've been talking about a topic for like five minutes, say, and you want to kind of suggest a solution or a conclusion to the conversation, you can say, so basically this is what you want to say. So you can say, allora, or if you want to talk about something else, you can say, allora, what is your name? <laughs> like, I don't know, something else. Like, if you're talking about economics and now you want to talk about math, you can say, so, about math. <laughs> you know, it's just helpful. Also, another word kind of similar and useful in the same way is insomma. Insomma means, like, to sum everything up. And it means in summary. So, or kind of basically, just if you're trying to summarize everything. So if you tell a long story and you want to say what the moral of the story was, you can say, basically, this is what the purpose is. So the same happens in Italian. You can say, insomma, quello che voleva dire è, and you can just say, like, what you want to say. So it's pretty cool. Last but not least, my favorite word on the list is macchiato. And I love the word macchiato because first of all, it sounds so beautiful. Second of all, yes, it means macchiato. And macchiato is a type of coffee, both in Italy and in America. But actually, I've never had a macchiato, but when I used to work at a store called Wawa, maybe you saw it, maybe you know about it, I don't know, but you can watch this video about it if you want. <laughs> anyway, uh, I used to work at a convenience store called Wawa and I used to make coffee sometimes, and I would make all these different types, lattes, coffees, frappuccinos, kind of, but like the Wawa version, and also I would make macchiatos all the time, and I thought it looked really nice because it was like milk, coffee, different layers, and you would never mix them together until you actually drank it, so I thought it was very fascinating, but when I came to Italy, my entire world changed when I found out what macchiato actually meant, and I was like, so happy to know this. Okay, so basically, if you're not familiar with a macchiato, I'll explain it to you. There are different layers of this coffee. Like there's a milk layer, a base layer, a coffee layer. So you would have first a layer of ice or some kind of base. Like if it's a vanilla flavor macchiato, you'd have vanilla flavor. 
base with other stuff and you'd have a bunch of milk and a bunch of like cream basically and on the very top you would pour some coffee some espresso mostly espresso sometimes other stuff and then on top you would have whipped cream or that's the American version at least and in Italy it's kind of similar they have the milk and on top goes the coffee part so the reason it's called macchiato is because macchiare in Italian means to stain and macchiato means stained because when you have the milk it's purely white and you stain the milk with the coffee and the coffee is the stain on top of the milk <sighs> I'm telling you guys this changed my life forever and I was so excited to learn about it I hope that you appreciate this fact as much as I do. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Comment down below if you have any more video recommendations and if you have any more fun Italian words to add. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can contact me on Instagram or on this account. You can just comment or something. Uh, follow me on Instagram anyway even if you don't contact me. and. Also, follow us on YouTube and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Love you guys so much and have a great week and see you next Monday. Yay! Ciao! Mwah.